It's a really important element. There's nothing worse than having a loss and then not having enough coverage to take care of that loss. So Dennis, you are the CEO of Mountain America Insurance Services. Yes, I am. Thank you. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us. We want to talk all about insurance. I do feel like um, it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's the one thing no one ever wants to pay for, but we all need to have it. Yeah, I, I'm an insurance consumer. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I feel that. Yeah. Uh, it is definitely uh, a large expense in most family budgets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about Mountain America Insurance Services. It's an independent agency, but it has the Mountain America name. That's correct. I'm confused. Mountain bit. America Credit Union is a, a principal owner of Mountain America Insurance Services. Okay. And uh, me and my team, we operate it on behalf of Mountain America. Okay. Uh, so we're, we are equity partners and have the same goal of serving members. Okay, love that, love that. So um, tell me a little bit more about how this organization works. Is it similar to going to a progressive or a Geico, you know, some of those household mm -hmm. names that offer insurance um, to get a quote or, or how does that work? Yeah, it's good that you brought up those two. They're very good examples. They're direct to consumer marketers. Okay. They're product manufacturers, so they're delivering their product directly to consumers. The difference between Geico and progressive, however, is Progressive also distributes their product, their insurance products, through independent insurance agencies. Okay. And uh, they're, they're on a par with other brand names that folks may recognize, the Hartford, Travelers, Liberty Mutual, yeah. Safeco, Allstate, Nationwide, uh, and smaller companies like Auto Owners and Acuity. And in Utah, there's a company called Bear River Mutual that is a product manufacturer and distributes its insurance policies through independent agents. Okay, so lots of different examples. Yes. I love that. So is Mountain America similar to that or Mountain America Insurance Services or how does yeah. that work? Mountain American Insurance Services is an agent of all of those uh, names that I just mentioned, with the exception of GEICO. Okay. GEICO does not use independent agents to distribute their products, but the rest of them do. Some of those uh, insurance carriers uh, distribute directly to consumers and also uh, online and also through independent insurance agents. Okay. So we're, re we're licensed with the state of Utah and with uh, multiple other states where members of the credit union reside. And so we are authorized to represent those companies and their products. Uh, a key distinction between an independent insurance agency and uh, going directly to a, a carrier, for example, is that we have multiple products to fit the risk profile of, of a member. Um, you know, some members may have three teenagers and not every insurance carrier is excited to insure a family with three teenage drivers. Yeah, as so, a parent, I'm not excited to insure yeah, <laughs> three we, teenage we, drivers either. And we all face that. And so when we, when we, um, assess and advise and assist members with their insurance. Uh, we, we look at what we call a risk profile and try to match the product and the insurance company that best fits uh, that risk profile, the needs. And, and price is one of the, the considerations, right? Absolutely. It is an yeah. important consideration, but it's not the only consideration. But that's the difference. We have the ability to pivot from one insurance company to another based on your need. That's awesome. So rather than me going online and getting my free quote from each individual place, I can come to Mountain America Insurance Services and you all will look at my quote unquote risk profile yeah. and determine which 
type of insurance or which carrier might be best. Exactly. Is that correct? Okay. I think that's a, a good way to summarize it. Okay. Um, however, in addition to that, we provide uh, online uh, quoting capabilities. Oh, okay. So a member can self-direct. Okay, um, awesome. Enter their own information and obtain a quote indication, which is helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I think we all want that sense of independence and being able to do that, right? And get an idea, come in educated maybe to that discussion. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, and we all like to control our, our buying journeys, don't we, these yes. days? I know I do. Um, I like to uh, use the word be prepared. I like to research and I like to be able to go down a purchasing journey that I'm in control of somewhat, right? Yeah. Um, when you get a loan, it's it's nice to be able to originate that loan online uh, until it gets to underwriting. And the same thing with insurance. You know, it's nice to be able to, as a consumer, uh, originate the application process or the quoting process. Uh, do it at two in the morning on Saturday, you know, or ten o'clock on Wednesday, and it allows you to start the process before it goes to underwriting. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So tell me, what types of insurance can I get through Mountain America Insurance yeah. Services? Is it just everything under the sun? Well, or what does know, that look like? I think it, it'd be foolhardy for me to say we can do everything. Uh, we can't do hole-in-one insurance if you want to sponsor a golf event. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not what we focus on. Fair uh, enough. We focus on personal insurance and business insurance in the world of property and casualty. Okay. We provide term life insurance, uh, working with Mountain America Credit Union's uh, advisors, but our focus is property and casualty insurance, and that means uh, the property coverage and liability coverage families need on their homes, their autos, their recreation toys, okay. um, and for businesses, for workers' compensation, and the building that they own or the building that they're leasing, the inventory and other property, and then the liability that business owners uh, assume. Th mm. There's risk in doing business. You own a, a store or a restaurant, or you have uh, you know, commercial trucks running around, you're bearing the risk of injuring other people or damaging other people's property. And that's what the casualty part of property and casualty uh, is, is all about. Okay, interesting. So tell me, do I have to be a member of Mountain America Credit Union in order to reach out to Mountain America Insurance Services or receive a quote or annual re review? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, our focus is uh, the, the world of Mountain America Credit Union. So within that environment, in, in all million plus members uh, are uh, folks that we wanna serve and that we focus on that within the Mountain America brand. However, uh, we are an insurance agency uh, licensed by the state of Utah and other states, and the Department of Insurance regulates our activities, and we will provide insurance to anybody that we can serve. But again, our focus is, is the membership of Mountain America Credit Union. Okay, but for anyone listening to this right now that may not be a Mountain America member, first of all, you should be, but um, we would love to help you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, they can receive service from Mountain America Insurance yes, Services. Yes, and, and Mountain okay. America Insurance Services has uh, many customers or clients that are not members yet okay. of Mountain America Credit Union. Okay, okay, fair enough. That's really interesting to know for sure. Um, so one thing that I've heard about that I want to get your clarification on, because Dennis, we know you're the expert here. Property insurance to value. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a fancy phrase. Look at you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look at me. I, <laughs> you know, I may or may not have just, you know, come across this term through some conversations. But with yeah. property values fluctuating as much as they have recently, why is this property insurance to value something that consumers need to be aware of? Yeah, it, it's become a, a really important issue over the past couple of years. Okay. Um, during the pandemic and post-pandemic, uh, the, pr the valuations of homes in certain market service areas have skyrocketed. Yeah. And um, lately, not necessarily precipitously dropped, but they have dropped 
home values have dropped. The values of uh, commercial properties have dropped. And so there is a lot of fluctuation. I like the way you cast that. Um, insurance to value is important in any kind of marketplace. Okay. Um, really what it is is I'm going to buy property insurance on my property sufficient to cover my losses. So if, if my house burns down, I want the insurance that, that coverage that I purchased to be sufficient to replace the home. And so the important element here is understanding replacement cost versus market value versus assessed value. Okay. So market value, as we know, is the amount someone's willing to pay. Right. Okay. And and as the market values increase, uh, sellers are excited because more and more buyers are willing to pay an increasingly higher cost, or they have to because of competition. Assessed value is t for taxes, and you may or may not like the assessed value. Right. In fact, you like a high market value on your home, but you don't really like a high assessed value. Uh, because that increases your taxes. So the replacement cost is separate from those. Okay. So replacement cost could be higher than assessed value, and it could be higher than market value, or it could be lower than either, either of those. So the insurance to value consideration uh, comes up when, well, my house, I've lost equity in the marketplace. Do I really need to insure it? as much as I, that I am sure in it for now. Let's okay. just use an easy example. Let's say I, I want to insure my home for $100,000 because the market value is $100,000. Um, this is not a realistic amount, obviously. Right, but, yeah. But it's easy for the example. Um, and because the market value is $100,000, I think, well, if I have $100,000 of coverage, that should replace it. Little did I know that uh, when, my, when, when the fire came and destroyed my home and the flood came and knocked out the street, uh, there are a lot of other costs associated with replacing the home. The materials cost have increased. The supply chain has been disrupted. And mm -hmm. so now the cost of materials and the length of time to get them has increased. Time increases the cost. Um, let's say that the infrastructure is the streets and the in the roads and whatnot, uh, it's going to be a while before they're finished. All those come into the replacement cost. Okay. Uh, let's say that my home has a lot of wainscoting and uh, you know shiplap and and variations in ceiling and the materials are quite expensive. That's going to change the the maintenance the replacement cost. So you see the the market value may not reflect you know, what the replacement cost is. So if I have a loss and I don't have the, the property insured to enough value to replace it, then then I'm bearing the risk personally to pay for the, the difference. Okay. So through annual reviews of policies, our agents assess that. And, okay. and they assist members in understanding uh, methodologies for calculating the replacement cost. Uh, it's a really important element. There's nothing worse than having a loss and then not having enough coverage to take care of that loss. Okay, so that's really the point of being aware of what my, see I've already forgotten it, insurance to value is. Sure, okay. exactly, okay. That, that is. And it's not, it, it, it feels like it's a situation where, okay, Everything is going up in price. I want to make sure that I'm covered. But what happens when everything goes down? Okay. Yeah. You know, when shouldn't my insurance be less? Shouldn't I have less coverage? Well, sometimes yeah, that's correct.